Should you be doing a one rep max? Yes or no? I haven't done deadlifts in about four months on my program, so I'm pretty much gonna fuck myself up for your education today. My lower back is already sore from life, but I nipped down to the petrol station, got myself a can of Monster. So why don't we just get into this? And yes, it's cold in Australia at the moment. I'm not usually the biggest fan of doing warm-ups, but... So to answer the initial question of whether or not you should be doing one rep maxes, in 99% of cases, no, you should not. For none other than the fact then you don't really need to, unless you're a powerlifter or a strongman and you're required to do a one rep max effort. If you're going to the Olympics, sure. But for the rest of us, it just doesn't really make sense. Let me explain. So here you see we've got volume and intensity. Imagine volume here being the amount of reps you do. And then imagine the intensity. How could you explain intensity? The higher your intensity, the more veins are sticking out your head and your neck during the lift. That's intensity. So say you're doing a one rep max, because the volume is low, the intensity is gonna be very, very high. However, if you wanted to bring the intensity down a bit, because remember, we're just trying to see what you're capable of. What is your maximal output? For the majority of you watching this, I believe it's a much better idea to let's shave off a bit of intensity and add a few more reps. Personally, I think a three rep max and a five rep max are the best. And depending on your level of expertise, if you're new to training, I'll probably give you a 10 rep max. One to two years, maybe five reps. If you're a bit of a veteran, you've been doing this like three, four years, maybe I'll put you on a three rep max. But unless you need to, I just don't see the functionality of putting you into a one rep max. Because the more intensity I expose you to, probably jeopardize form a little bit and maybe increase the chance of injury. Feeling good, feeling warm. I can now ascend up in weight. And remember, the reason we're doing this is to find and create a marker of where we're currently at and to improve it. So whether that marker is a three rep max, five rep max, seven rep max, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. It's a marker that we're using to seek progress. And there's some of you, as far as OCD, will be really annoyed that the plates might be different colors or the bars are different color. Also, here's a quick hack for any of you that maybe don't like stripping the bar. You can put a little plate under here Roll your weights onto it. And it can save your lower back if you're a pussy. 30, 30, 60, 70, 80, 80 kg. RPE five. Now this is completely up to you guys, but when I go above body weight with a lift, I put a belt on. Like I said, personal preference, I just like something to push into when I'm lifting. And I like the fact that it feels nice. Doing three reps feels nice. I'm not just going balls out for one rep. And for the next lift, you can use grip assist. So for any of you guys that don't know how these work, these are figure eights. So I put my wrist through them, like so. And when I'm under the bar, I put my hand through and the bar will sit in that gap. Now, the benefits of these, one, so that my grip isn't the failing part of the lift, but two, it's gonna allow me to relax my arms a bit more. Where before, when I'm active, it's like bend through my arm. Now I'm not strong enough to tear my own bicep. By wearing these, I can have a bit more of a relaxed arm, which is actually gonna give me probably a slightly better starting position because I can take the tension up my arms, start slightly higher. Shoes, I'm just wearing a flat shoe. Vans, sometimes I'd lift in just socks. Vans feel nice and it's a bit cold. Oh, what have I got for three today? 150 at least. No doubt, probably gonna get some like strong men in the comments, bro. bro. You, you can't even deadlift, man. You don't even know how to deadlift. Listen, yeah, it's been four months since these have been in my program. Let me live, you know what I mean? Oh, RPE8, RPE8, that was getting tough. Now the weight's getting heavier. You'll notice I have to focus more on looking up. I imagine I've been pulled by the scruff. So when shit gets tough, I need to make sure I'm looking forward and driving up. Also, I probably didn't engage my lats hard enough. Let the bar get away from me a little bit. But I just don't want to scrape my shins. Let's go 150, bruh. Now the beautiful thing about this, for those of you that are still watching the video, I can get a rough estimation of my one rep max using a one rep max calculator which I'll do as an overlay on the screen now. So if I can do 150 for three, 
I can determine that my one rep max is whatever it says on the screen now, which I expect will be like 180, 190, but I could be grossly wrong with that. As far as even like my, my central nervous system, doing 150 for three isn't gonna tax me as much as doing 180 for one. Yeah, I still get the same outcome, same objective. I get to keep my form in a better place. I get to mitigate my chance of injury. Anyone can rough up more than they can lift. 150 for three, 150 for three. 15, 15, 30, 45, 55, 65. 65 times two, 130, plus the bar, 140, 150. Work the heel hook. All right, you little bitch. Oh, yes. Now, a little bit counterintuitive to the theme of the video. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to do three sets of three there because actually my workout today isn't just determining a three rep max, it's actually three sets of three. So I'm gonna do that for two more sets. To wrap up, I think it's important that you do rep max tests, especially if your goals are related to strength increases. For things like hypertrophy and muscle growth, you can just work a perception of what you think is difficult, that RPE of seven out of 10, or two reps left in reserve. The amount of people that benefit from this has like a dwindling effect as it goes up, the top part of the pyramid, there are people that need to do rep maxes, but the chances are the majority of you aren't that person. And I think that you can extrapolate many more benefits from a three, or five or 10 rep max than you can from a one rep max. Then over time, you look to improve that three, five, 10 rep max. Because I've done this a million times before. You get the bar off the floor, you haven't really got it in the tank, but you're like, I want to get this for my ego. I need to lift this. You do a really ugly rep. You don't just give yourself a sore back for a fucking week. You end up completely fatiguing your central nervous system and you shut down for the next few days for what an instagram video if you're shaking like a shit and dog trying to get a weight up it's just not worth it so should you be doing rep maxes yes should you be doing one rep maxes no three five ten that's about it thanks for watching bye bye